Just got to work and now I have to turn all the lights on. And I got mail. Let's see. There's most probably a, one of the most complicated light switch setups in our basement is like there's some switches that have to stay on in order for the lights to be off. Some that have to be off in order for the lights to be off. They're in every which location. There's some at the entrance that you saw. There are some over there. Then I have to go to this area over here. Then I have to get these light switches. Then there's a light switch over there, which I have to leave down to keep on. Then there's the light switch over there, which is always uh, on because that's uh, a pain. Oh. I just kicked some Lego. I'll move that in a moment. And then there's also a light switch over here that I have to get. And I have to only turn the left one on because this one is for a light outside. So it's just really weird lighting situation in the basement. But yeah, and then we usually just leave that light off because the light for that one is also back there. But the light for this one is over there. So it is a very unique lighting setup, I'll say. Well, we just got mail, and I'm going to try to do a video of it, and so I'm probably going to record that video, possibly upload it and edit it first before the vlog, and then try to upload the vlog. Uh, probably not going to include the BrickLink order in that video, so I'll just grab it now real quick. I got these the set over there that I need to get parts for to complete for the guy on eBay. I just got that in the mail, and there's on a really weird piece of paper about building pocket world on windows mobile devices um very interesting might read that later for the fun of it but uh these are the parts i needed i know there's some like really common parts up here actually i think some of those parts are literally right over there but i just didn't really feel like picking those up so i just ordered them and those parts have gotten a container over there and these parts were probably in the printed container behind me but We've got these parts now. Only this one here is the one that I was unlikely to have, so I just ordered them all so I didn't have to look. Why is it not focusing? Okay, there. And so, yeah, this here is these parts. Hopefully that part isn't damaged, otherwise I'll have to reorder it. But then I'll just combine that one with that stuff over there, and then I should be able to get that relisted later. And that was all that was in this envelope. So I'm going to try and uh, make the unboxing uh, haul video now, and then I'll probably check back in once that's done. I'm going to do something I have not done in a very long time. I think today I might get back to taking photos for eBay. I used to, like, once a week take photos for unlisted stuff on eBay uh, to get new listings up. Because normally when I sell something, I just relist old listings and stuff like that. But I used to had new listings decently often. But I'm not going to lie, I'm not the biggest fan of listing on eBay. It is like one of the things I just put off as much as I can. And I might not even get it done today. But I'm going to try to uh, first grab these parts and complete as many minifigures from my waiting for parts container as I can and then I'm going to get as many different things ready so that if, even if I don't take the photographs today then I'll be able to have a whole bunch of stuff ready for photographs for tomorrow but yeah then I'll try and just tackle as much of this as I can get as much relisted and then once I'm done uh relisting as much as I can I'll do a recap of what I listed uh relisted on eBay and then the ones I'm going to get ready to list on eBay. And, uh, yeah, we'll see where it goes. Because, I mean, I got some just already in bags waiting for photos. I got a whole bunch of just minifigures that are just not listed yet and stuff. So, yeah, there's just lots of stuff in here. Different minifigures. Most, some complete, some incomplete. Just waiting for cards to be made. I'm not, it's not my most favorite task to do so it just gets put off for a long time it's probably been months i've uh, at least since i've done this last so it's been needing to be done for a very long time so i'm gonna do it now but i keep procrastinating by recording when i should just press stop recording and start but then i would actually have to start which is what i'm trying to avoid doing but i think i should start now but let's look at this lego one time real quick okay i'll start now yogurt well, this is the first for me. I'm editing a video and my computer has not crashed like five times while processing it. I've already got all the files uploaded. It's a shorter vlog than normal, only 24 minutes, but I've already got all the clips up and I'm just about to start doing a watch through of it and 
uh, transforming all the stuff, all the sideways clips that I need to make the proper way around and stuff like that, and then get it uploaded. So I might actually have this one uploaded on time today. And um, the uh, other video about the um, uh, haul video, that's actually going to be after the vlog that I'll post it, because I just looked and it's still trying to upload that to my cloud, even though it's been like an hour or two hours or so since I recorded that, so I, it's going to take a while, there's like a 15 minute long video, so considering it's just one clip, it's going to take a while, so I don't know how long it'll take to get that done, and then um, I'll get that uploaded after it, but by the time you watch this clip, this will be in the next vlog, so by the time you watch it, you'll have, the other video will be out already with the hull, and uh, that is if I don't scrap the entire thing, because my camera might have been completely off the entire time, I couldn't know uh well recording so i'll figure that all out later and so if it's not uploaded by the time this one's uploaded then that means i've scrapped the video but if it is uploaded then i've just uh decided to go with it even if it uh ended up being not the best but yeah finally it's not crashing while editing it is very nice it is definitely very nice to get this nice image result from just having two images like this i literally just had these two images here, and then with enough editing, you can turn images like that into something like this. I am very happy with how this one turned out. This is uh, the old image for it. So and a lot of images, I think this person, let's see if it'll tell me who, um, for images, yeah, BB1086. I think they submitted a lot of these images because they have this exact same design with the uh, brick on the bottom with a white brick wall in the background. And they're uh, good and all, but they, their older fuzzier camera it only shows one side and they say they don't like it when there's bricks in the background so it's nice to be able to upgrade the photo i'm probably not going to do the other part of the torso right now but because i my the rest of my video just downloaded but i was resizing it uh combining images removing backgrounds rotating images because they were slightly crooked and so then after all of that then you can get some nice results like this i'm gonna request a name change though because it just has uh houston rockets number three but it doesn't say what it shows on the back with the player's name so i'm gonna request that be added to the title of the main torso and the smaller torso and uh yeah pretty good and lots of fun so I wasn't planning on doing it, but I decided I was going to just finish it because you don't start a job and then not finish it. So I did it for the main torso, so I just uh, decided I should just make sense to do it for the other one as well. So I started with this photo and this photo, and then after some magic of editing, it ended up getting this photo right here. It's very nice, and this is the older photo. The older photo wasn't necessarily too bad, but it was... I downloaded it and found its dimensions, and then... Um, one second, let me get it back up. Uh, yeah, I checked it here, and then, uh, if you look at its dimensions, resize, it's only 240 by 180. All my photos, I always make sure they're as, uh, one of these is always either 600 or 800, whichever one is the one that can get that they don't the other one doesn't go over the size limit and so there was a tiny image before but now this image here is much larger and easier to see and it's going to replace this image here now i'm currently experimenting on different backgrounds to use for my photo removal tool because when i just take parts on the table it's fine for most parts but specifically minifigures uh, or minifigure parts with yellow hands it just completely throws it off for some reason because like over here i finally got a good one i used a blue background and it finally saved the hands but then when i was looking at my comparison images you can see that the right one here has just a very bluish tint to it as opposed to the one that i took with no background and so then when i have no background it works fine for the front as you saw in that image but for other ones the hands are missing like over here just they're gone they're on the left one but not the right one and then same on the other side and it's just like that for every image i've tried several different uh tools this one's the blue background one so it's still visible um so now i'm gonna try a black background because it contrasts it enough and then the color of the background is going to be the same as the torso itself so hopefully it won't cause any problems sorry i had to cut that i accidentally showed a whole bunch of uh private emails um so then i click download there on the image so we'll see how this uh image looks here we'll go upload image select the recent one 
Ooh, which ones are bridges? This one looks like a bridge, this one, this one, and that's probably all of them. Alrighty, so it's uploading the image, and it's gonna process the image real quick. It's almost done. Usually it doesn't take too long for this part, but since I didn't crop the image first, it's, uh... Okay, so it looks like the hands are all there this time, so that is really nice. So now what I can do is I can click download image, and then it's downloaded up there. Then I can just go here. Uh, did I save? Now I'm gonna have to go back on here. Then I'm gonna have to choose file. Then I'm gonna first have to reselect the first front one, which was right here. Then I go back over here, open the new image, then I've got the back image here. Then I need to resize it just so I can work with it. Then I need to apply. Then I need to crop. Then I need to nicely line up this crop right here. And then I can use the bottom line to see if I need to rotate the image or not, which it doesn't look like I need to for this one. So then I can then crop the sides up just like that there. Then I can apply it. Then I can resize it to enlarge the image and then apply that, then I can download that, save as PNG, then I can go to the merger, then I can select that image, then I can merge the images, oh, and then I have to download it, then I can go back here, then I can open it up again, then I can reselect it again, and then resize it so it fit BrickLink, and there, now it's a much nicer background, you won't see a huge blue tint on this side anymore. So I think that this is the image I'm going to go for. And then what I was doing before is I was setting the minifigure down like this and then taking the photo of it. But then that just leaves it at a weird angle where you can see the bottom a bit and stuff like that. And then all the other uh, more professional looking images that I've seen, what they do is they set the minifigure torso like this and then they take the image. So that's what I tried for this one. Although looking at it, it seems to have messed up the bottom a little bit now because it's a black torso and a black background. So... I think I'm going to have to try that again, and I might go to this one, because I know it's got a more in-depth uh, version of the background removal where I can edit it a bit and stuff, so I'm going to possibly try that, and so then I'll check in to see what we end up with the new image for, but this here is the old image. It doesn't even have a photo of the back of it. And so then that's just for changing the front. I actually uploaded an image a while ago, but I had a weird angle and there's a smaller image. So there's only put as an alternate because uh, you couldn't even see much on the arms and stuff. But let's see if we can fix this and then also get one for just the torso part without the arms. And after like another five or ten adjustments, I finally have a good enough I finally had it a little bit better, but then I'm not sure if it was on the one I showed on here a little while ago or not, but part of the arm was just gone, and so then I had to worry about that. Then uh, it was just a bit messed up again. Then I couldn't uh, edit much because it wasn't accepting just the color of the arms. Like, it was just completely gone, the entirety of them. And then after that, there was some weird lines at the bottom and stuff. So eventually, I just cropped the image super close to the line. It isn't cutting anything off, um, but except for that weird stuff at the bottom. I think there's, like, shadows for messing with it or something like that. But I got rid of that by cropping it extremely close. So now it's a nice finish at the bottom. Then I just cropped this one a little bit more so it would be a bit closer. And so now I just need to resize it for the last time apply that and now this will be the image in the catalog as opposed to this image right here i'd say it's a good improvement it took me like half an hour to get this one ready but i just had so many problems with this one but now i've gotten things figured out so that next time i have to upload something like this it'll go a million times faster because i now know what color backgrounds i can use to get best lighting and then how to fix the bur blurriness on the bottom of some of them and stuff so it's all figured out now so future ones will go a lot smoother than this one I just posted the first haul vlog and um, I am not used to, I haven't really looked too much at modern CMFs, so I misidentified a lot of the CMF parts in the video, so sorry for that, but it was overall pretty fun video, but I think I accidentally left my camera zoomed in for half of it, so um, that's uh, probably not the best, but hopefully next time I release uh, one, it'll be a lot better than this one. Well, that one went a lot faster. I finally finished uh, 
uploading the other YouTube video, which <clears throat> in between this clip and the last clip, I uploaded the haul video. And uh, so then I went on to editing the next part. This was the previous photo. It wasn't too bad, but it was just like weird oddly different sizes and oddly spaced apart and stuff so i just updated it with this photo and this photo since there's no hands or arms that the camera and uh processors didn't like it was just a lot easier this only took a few minutes and i was able to now just go here and click let me verify part number okay and then just click upload and then that's all done now i think i just found the best way to get photos of parts with the highest photo quality normally i would take a photo like this or maybe i would even flip the phone upside down to get it like that or something or try and get a weird angle like this and it worked but what i did for this one is i put my light down then i grabbed my phone i didn't i completely flipped it upside down and then i leaned it against it and now the photo quality is just absolutely amazing as opposed to any other way of doing it so now I did this part and I got these beautiful images right here. These are some of the highest quality images my phone's ever taken. And so this is the old one. And so then this will be the new image. I just really love how it looks. It's definitely my favorite way of doing it. And so I would just need to take the arms off and do it for the uh, torso itself. And then I'll be calling it a day. It's now 10.05 p.m. I was asked by a... Uh, Bricklink member who also watches the channel how I sort uh, my Lego my used Lego because they're also sorting a whole bunch of different um, Lego parts right now as well and so basically a quick rundown of how I did it is I first had I believe there's 24 maybe 28 different categories like plate modified brick modified slopes uh, printed and stickered minifigure parts random pieces technic and just stuff like that if i can find the paper i might show it later in, in the vlog if i can find it but i don't even know if i have a paper that had it anymore but basically you can sort it into a whole bunch of different uh general themes personally i did it based off of bricklink themes uh or categories for the most part so that's a pretty good way to do it for just generalized ones i did 28 different categories because that's what would fit on a table like this one here uh 28 different containers if you count in a massive tray in the center which i use for sorting and then once it was one every time I got one of these containers full with parts of a category, I would dump it into a box like this one here. And it would just every time the container was filled, well, I would often wait till I had a whole bunch of them filled up. And then I would just uh, pour them into all different types of boxes. And then I would just fill up the boxes. And then if the box got too full, I would just put another box on top of it and start filling it up. And then once the approximately one and a half thousand pounds of bulk use was sorted, it took like half a year i want to say well maybe not quite but around there somewhere and once all that was sorted then i went on to the next step which was then um i uh, was there have an example well it's not quite sorted at all entirely but then well actually i could just use this example over here i don't know why i didn't think of this um once it was sorted by um it's category i then washed it once then dried it out and then all the plate modified parts were all in a huge container and then those were sorted by individual mold types so now we've got uh individual mold types for these parts sometimes there was uh two different ones in a container for just a really small one or one offs were put in a container and then after it's sorted by mold type well not exact mold type but generalized mold type because like for example this one here there's a five millimeter and a six millimeter pin and i do not look forward to having to separate all of those because it's like an almost impossible to tell apart difference and once it's sorted by generalized mold type it's then sorted by either individual mold type or color next and so then you'll get something like these containers here and stuff like that and then if it's sorted first by color then it'll be sorted by exact mold type after or if it's sorted by exact mold type first then it'll be sorted by color after and then once it's being sorted like that then it gets stacked if it's able to and then it gets processed and listed this process it takes a long time i've got all of these parts here just waiting for um me to get around to listing them they're just everywhere that you can see just stuff absolutely everywhere so yeah it's a long backlog and checking parts for damage and listing them is definitely the most time consuming part for each brick but uh that's just a quick rundown of how i sorted the stuff from the bulk used 
to from one and a half thousand pounds of used bulk to individual containers filled with the same bricks so i hope that helps if you still have any questions feel free to drop them below and i'll try to answer those uh with any details i might have missed so i just checked and the person who purchased the instruction manual has now left positive feedback so the other video where you saw me packing in between uh cereal blocks and stuff that one arrived perfectly fine so that's all good so just wanted to give an update on that and so yeah it didn't get damaged or anything like that i'm just showing this page for because i don't want to show any of their personal information on the other page or anything yogurt while going through some of the stuff of the minifigure uh, lot that I got in the mail the other day, I came across this 3L bar, and then I was really excited. I got a 4L just to confirm it was actually 3L. And then last time I had one of them, I sold it for eight and a half dollars. So yeah, that was a very nice find indeed. And I think this one, I can't tell if it's lines or bite marks on it. I'll have to check closely later, but yeah, good find. So a quick update from the bulk stuff. I'm about to just finish going through a order and some other parts are in a different order. But then I've got some Futuron parts here, which I haven't gotten to yet. But then this here's the bulk of the more generic stuff. I should just quickly get this torso processed though. But basically all this stuff is either not minifigure parts or generic stuff. And then I got these minifigures listed on Bricklink over here. Uh, it's weird because this look is from the one set that had Obi-Wan, R2-D2, and a... Um, can't remember its name, I'll show it later. And those were all in mint condition, basically, except Luke, he was damaged on the legs, and I'll see if I can get it through on the camera, probably won't pick it up, though, with the lighting. But his torso was badly cracked multiple times on one side, and it was just really weird. So, but I listed him, just uh, added that to the comments, and then put him on Bricklink. Then for the eBay, I ended up getting the other three minifigures from that set all relisted, and a short Batman, and then there's some other parts this was the complete one, and then that stuff is just going to probably get listed on eBay one day. And, uh, yeah, that's uh, basically all done now. Everything else is either listed. I got a whole bunch of different stuff listed there in that one, and two or three more doors that got put away already. And so, yeah, then there's just this stuff here, which is mostly going to probably just be put in a bag. And then once I have some room on the table after I'm done the Galador stuff, I'll just put it all in its proper drawers over there. And so, yeah, that's... Uh, how it's going and i don't know if i showed it yet let me just get it up real quick um catalog got her changed let's move that light out of the way item images okay one second uh scrolling but i finally got uh the um image here i actually no i think i already showed that um uh, i thought there's another one let me see um Oh yeah, and this is uh, the newer one uh, for the one of the Galador parts. I've got some over here. This one here is a rather large part, and I actually did some manual editing on it because for some reason on the photo, right over at this uh, stud here, there's like a small gr uh, gray line over there. So I had to actually manually Photoshop that out of it. Well, Photoshop is not the right word because that's technically the name of the program, and I never used that program. But I mainly did that, and this was the old photo, so I'm very happy with the new photo overall. But these arms here are still a bit blurry, but the old photo, <laughs> yeah, I think uh, that my cam my phone's almost touching the screen. So that was the old photo, and this is a new one. It's still a bit blurry, but I think it's a little bit of an improvement. So yeah, I didn't get too much done, but uh, the photo over here... Uh, let me scroll down. This one took like an hour to do because of the color of the arms just kept making them disappear and stuff. But yeah, that stuff's finally done. So now I can get to work on something else. And for some reason, whenever I list minifigures on Bricklink, my default box to go to when I don't have one at my table is box 16. So I tend to have this box way more full than the rest of them. So let's just quickly put these few minifigures that I listed from the lot. A lot of these were either damaged ones that I uh, wasn't going to list on eBay because eBay I don't list any damaged ones basically or it was just some city minifigures and this one was surprisingly valuable. It's not made up of any really rare parts or anything like that but like the torso goes for like a dollar and the face for about a dollar fifty or so but for some reason the minifigure itself complete was worth five to ten bucks so I've li I listed it. It sold as high as $20 for some reason. And people are asking as high as 70 It's just really weird. I don't know what's up with it. It doesn't sell much or anything like that. But I just listed that one for about the price range. And so yeah, this 
this is the minifigures that I got listed and then I got a few cards out here. I think I might be able to complete a couple of them, but then I'm just going to process the two orders, that one and uh, this one here because that's for the set and then I can get that listed and get it ready for the guy. But I found this one uh, hose in the set and uh and not in the set in the bulk and i think there's a container over here for them so i'll put that in there i've had those many hoses many times in the past and they've sold really well i had one order that bought like 65 bucks worth of those hoses there's crazy but yeah this is the current progress of the technic stuff that my dad's sorting he's got a couple bags already filled up and just lots of containers Filled with a lot of the stuff. These are going to be a pain separating the two versions. Not the light blue screen, dark and the black. But the black, there's two versions of it. One has these friction lines that you can kind of see over there. Oh, why isn't it? Why did the focus just stop? Let's see. Okay, yeah. One version has the friction lines that you can kind of see on that one there. And then there's an older version that doesn't have it. And normally if there was just a version like that, and considering it's a very low value part and stuff like that, I would just list it as uh, maybe multiple, maybe the newer and older version. But the older version without the friction lines is like two, three bucks a pin. So it's definitely worth it, especially since the sets it came in often had like 10, 20, 30 of the pin in it. So it's definitely worth it to separate it out, but it's not going to be fun. And then there's still all of this Technic left to sort. There's just a whole bunch. Oh, let's just put this one tiny piece away so I can say it helped a little bit. I just don't get some stores. For example, this top minifigure, I bought it for $375. Here's listed as good condition. Let's take a bit of a closer look. I don't know if the camera will pick it up, though. Um, one second, let's see. Well, it, for example, the face. Huge spots of fading, but I don't think the camera will pick it up. Uh, the camera won't pick it up, but the head is just nasty. Yeah, the lighting was difficult. Oh, you might have been able to see one of the bite marks there. Actually, let me try changing the color of the light to uh, hopefully pick it up better. No, it's just not picking it up. Let me try here. It's The lighting just won't let it be picked up. But then the torso, it's just the horribly scratched. Those are scratches on it. And then there's a mark in the front. Um... The legs had, uh, let me try and get it, had uh, multiple nicks and more bite marks. And uh, the head had multiple, uh, the headgear had several black marks on it that you can't get rid of. And then this other head that had no description, meaning it's, uh, as per the Brooklyn catalog, it's supposed to be in good condition. It is, I want, my lighting probably still won't let me pick it up. Uh, let me see if I can zoom in to try and pick it up. Okay, yeah, like that head there, look at that. Look, okay, let's see, yeah, there's bite marks everywhere on it. You can only slightly see it with this lighting, but it is just in horrible condition. And then there was uh, this head here. It was, it's, uh, it's supposed to be a brighter gold color, but it's just been almost washed down a bit and stuff like that. So I'm going to contact the seller about this minifigure and this head here. But at least the main torso that I came here to the store for was good. Oh, yeah, and also two torsos had cracked arms. And so that's fun. Yeah, this here is just why I, I just can't stand buying from stores. And I would rather get bulk lots in the mail to uh, get parts and then check them myself. Because at least 50 or 60% of times I buy on Bricklink from other stores, I just always have to contact the seller for refunds for parts. Because it's just so damaged oftentimes. So yeah, quick recap. Damaged, good from the order. Damaged stuff on the left, good stuff on the right. I might see if I can throw up some pictures of the closer ups of the damage. I'm not going to mention the store or anything like that because it is always possible this is a one-off mistake for the store. But yeah, it's only four items in good condition. And one, two, three, four. Well, this one wasn't necessarily damaged, but it's still part of the minifigure. Um, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight that were damaged. Yeah, it's crazy.
So whenever I am done with uh, sending the email, I'm basically done. I'm just reviewing it. I just put the parts in a container up here. I ended up specifically getting a container for right there because I just had, when I was buying stuff and getting like one or two orders a day in the mail uh, from different stores for eBay parts, I was, I that container always had multiple bags and so I just wanted somewhere to set them. And so yeah, now that's there. And then whenever it's eventually resolved one way or another, then that bag will get removed and either parts thrown out or whatnot at that point. Time for this episode of why did I order this part right here? Well, let's see if it'll focus. Well, I mean, you can see it in the photo there. All I know is that it is uh, for one of these minifigures and I don't see any yet. I might need it for one of these. Hello? Let's see here, actually. Um, don't know if there's... Yeah, there's no private information here. Okay, so, uh, Dragon Knight. I think I've already relisted that one. Yeah, that one's already been relisted. Um, oh wait, what about the one underneath? Uh, Cass 493. Oh, yep, that's the one. Okay, so I needed it for Cass 493. Now... I gotta check this entire row form because according to here, it says I do not currently have any in stock because I sold it at uh, the asking price. So now that is for that. So I'm gonna have to try and find that now. I'll check back in once I find it. So it turns out it was not in this row. It was in this row, almost near the back, but I eventually found it. That took a good five-ish minutes. So turns out I just need the helmet. So I'm just curious. Uh, you know, the helmet's still on my wanted list. Um, let's see, it's, uh, not the most expensive part, but obviously I apparently don't have it anywhere in my knights or castle drawer. Yeah, I'm not seeing it anywhere in here, so yeah, then that'd be something that if I uh, had money to spend, I would prioritize, uh, buying that. Oh, I actually put the drawer a bit too far over here. Okay, there's that. Um, but yeah, I don't have that right now, but I'm just gonna put this in the bag and then put that back on the side but many times i order a part like this no idea where it's from and then it just ends up in a drawer over back there somewhere and uh stays there until i can remember what i need it for but then also i found this card which i'm pretty sure i can relist because i keep seeing it available in my store and uh then i'll just transfer it to ebay because it's worth more on ebay so then i'll do that and uh yeah that's uh finally found it at least just got the other order processed and uh with this one the guy's fine if the parts have a little bit of wear on them so that's okay uh but thankfully i did uh manage to get a few parts that had only a little bit of wear on them and uh they weren't badly damaged or anything like that but that's why you order extras because all of these ones here had either bite marks or extremely heavy scratching uh, and stuff like that probably can't see it in the photo too well but that's uh uh what you can check in person a lot easier for uh, so I should have all the parts I need now to complete this. I'm just going to uh, get the setup real quick and then going to uh, verify the inventory once more. And then once that's done, then I'll wash it. And then tomorrow, hopefully, I'll be able to message the guy and it should be ready for him by then. I will dry it out and stuff. So now I'm left with these parts. I'm pretty sure this is uh, for a space police minifigure. And this might be for a Ninjago minifigure, and I think these dark blue ones are for a superhero's minifigure, the Ultron Sentry or something like that. But as for this part, and this dark, uh, transparent dark red one, I haven't the slightest idea. This one might be part of an ice cannon for Mr. Cold, possibly. But, yeah, and this one might be from Galaxy Squad thing, but... I'm, I don't know, I'll, I'll check in uh, once I find all the ones that these things are for. And then, uh, got most of the parts for the buzz droids. I currently only need two of the jumpers. I mean, I know I have them, like, right over there, but, I mean, that's, like, entirely too much work. And, um, so then I also need the, uh, printed parts for them, and then that'll be relisted. I think I sell two of them for 20 or 25 bucks on eBay, pretty good. And, uh, so yeah, then I'll get these, uh, up, fixed, and found now. So I surprisingly did not did end up actually finding all of them. So yeah, the Ultron Sentry, I just put them all in there. I don't think I need quite all of them because it, when I buy the figure, it's supposed to come with uh, them on the feet by default, but I actually am just buying parts. So that is probably all I need. Then it was for Mr. Captain Cold's gun. 
and then uh, one was for the one insectoid, and then the one was for a mummy. The last one already had it, and then the mummy one needed it, and I was going to put it in the bag, but I, you can kind of see it's actually a stress mark at the end, so I won't be able to put that in it. And then there's a uh, megaphone for the space police, so I'm surprised I did actually find them all. None of them were completed, but they'll just all go back in the box now, and then I'm probably going to call it a day. It's now 10 p.m. I'll pull orders in the morning, most likely. It's now 2 p.m. and I am just starting to pull orders now. Let's do a quick Pablo. Right here, we just need to go to door 6119. So let's bring everything over there to door 6119. Grab door 6119 and put it in the container. And for that, it was 1298 after tax and shipping. Pretty easy order to pull. I think these might have been from that uh, more recent... Uh, I, don't, I honestly don't know what car it is. Well, probably a year ago at this point, at least, since I bought it. But the one that had, like, a whole bunch of stickers on it, that was, like, a crazy amount. I honestly couldn't remember what it's called, but I think that's from that set. And so, yeah, that's just a quick Pablo. I'm pretty sure this order is from a viewer of the channel. They've ordered ordered a couple times before, and they are a big fan of Blacktron. And so I just want to say thank you for the order. It'll get packed up. And uh, I'll send you a message on Instagram once it's backed up and showing you when it's ready to go. So thank you for your order. Yogurt. Just surpassed one and a half thousand views on my store tour. Wow, this is exciting. Also, I'm at like 96 subscribers. So I'm almost at 100 subscribers now. And uh, the whole video is actually one of the best videos I've done in a while. Um, actually the fourth best, I thought it's the third best, but it's the fourth best, I missed the one over there that has, uh, the vlog five, but yeah, it's doing surprisingly well, it's great, thank you for watching. Sometimes, even though I have lots of work to do, I just completely mess around and update photos that don't really need to be updated, like, for example, this photo for, um, let's see, I don't want to show any information, um, this photo here, I already uploaded a new photo, and it's been approved, I think I might have showed that in the previous one, but anyways, I've got a new photo for it, it's pretty good, and everything like that, but then they said, in a passing remark on a thing, they said they're fine with having multiple images as alternate images for parts, so that people can better see all the sides, so, I was like, oh, you know what? Why not just add a few alternate images? Then, say, you spend another half hour of your life just trying to figure out editing because you never took a photo editing class and you're using, like, a whole bunch of really confusing websites that don't make sense. Eventually, given enough time, you'll get something like this. I am finally done it. This took forever to do, but it is nice. And my battery said that it said it's recording, so I don't know if I just paused it right there, but it is finally done. And hopefully the battery warning didn't uh, tell me that didn't freeze the video much. Now, on to the next part. I probably, the way that it works is you can only add one image at a time, basically. So, I first add the one image at the optimal angle, so, angle, so something like this today. And then I'll take the rest of the photos now, and then tomorrow or so, whenever the image has been approved, then I'll take the rest of the photos, which I'll have taken just now, of all the different sides, the top and the bottom of it. And then I'll uh, edit all of those together, and then I'll submit that uh, in a couple days, probably. I'll probably check in when I do that. But yeah, then... Got all of these parts to go. And I wonder why sales have been down lately. I haven't really been listing much, but yeah. It's fun at least, so that's uh, good. So I just uh, finished taking photos, editing the first photo, got the others as alternates, and then just started checking some of them for damage. But then this one, I'll see if the, the uh, phone will pick it up. It has a rattling sound, so I was going to throw it out, but I'm going to first see if I can fix uh, it possibly by tightening the screws, but also I'm curious what it looks like on the inside. So I'm just going to grab my tool repair, uh, my phone repair kit, because I do repair phones every now and that's pretty fun, and then uh, I'm going to just uh, try to see what it looks like on the inside of here, out of curiosity, and then I'll check back in once it's opened. Okay, I got the screws out. Let's see what this looks like on the inside. If there's spiders, I am just gonna throw this thing super far, but there is no spiders. Okay, so this is interesting. Got a thingamabob, two other thingamabobs, another thingamabob, and is this thingamabob removable? Yes, it is. So this is very interesting. I wonder if this has a part number on it. And if so, I might add it to the catalog, mess with the admins a bit. Um, but I'm not seeing anything on here. 
Yeah. But yeah, then uh, I'm going to see if I can put it back together. I completely forgot how it was when I took it apart. Um, but yeah, at least I recorded it if I need that. So yeah, I'll see if I can put it back together now. And uh, if it still makes the sound or not. Well, the rattle is still there. And uh, I mean, I could probably take it apart, fix it. But well, I mean, it'd be actually fun to remove the screws again. Because they're cool screws, they're triangle ones. I'm going to do that again. Well, I just took it apart again, but it's still there and i'm now sure it's the part in the center there that's making the sound and it looks extremely worn down so the head there's probably a head put in here let me see if i can just quickly do this yeah head like this and it's just turned around a whole bunch and so now it lost its grip and it's not as good anymore so yeah this thing will be thrown out then since there's nothing that can really be done with it since the head's not got a tight fit or anything so yeah, it's garbage, but at least most of the others are fine. I have finally finished filling up my first container of Galador parts. Box 150 is now full. So as full as I'll put it, it's, I mean, I could theoretically put a little bit more in. The other boxes aren't quite as full over there yet, but I am done the dark gray Galador stuff. Every single part in here now has dimensions and weights on BrickLink. And same with the other boxes. And then all the parts that needed fo better photos have had better photos added. So that is finally done. It is now Friday night. I got this stuff a couple vlogs ago. So I got this stuff over a week ago now. And I still have all of this stuff left to go. There's a lot of it. So, but yeah, it's fun. Do it slowly. Not do it all in one go. And it'll get there eventually. So I think I'm done with Galador for the night, and I mean, I got all those things to do still, which I still haven't gotten to. I messaged the guy about this, I finally got that all washed up and confirmed, I'm waiting for a response on that. But I'm gonna probably try and list some of these guys here, the uh, plate modified 2x3 with holes, and uh, how much do you think that reddish brown one is worth? Let's check real quick. Let's get the thing up. Reddish brown... So it's worth, oh, I thought it'd be worth a lot more. Between three and 83 cents is what it's worth. So that's good. I thought it would be worth a bit more because it's uh, usually uh, reddish brown parts with a little quantity are from older Star Wars sets. But it definitely looks like it's been re-released recently with 36,000 available and only 3,000 sold. So yeah, actually, we'll just check one more. We'll check the tan one real quick. Where's my mouse? Okay, here. Oh, I missed it. And 24 cents, a bit better. And I'll just check the dark blue as well, because why not? Okay, dark blue, that's a good one. It sells for 10 bucks brand new, used, and between a dollar and two and a half dollars is what it's worth. So let's check, what's that from? Dark blue. Okay, it's from this uh, random set. And uh, I've got three of them in dark blue, so that means I would have had two copies of this set at some point. I also think I had three of the tan antennas. I don't know if I ended up listing them all. I think one was badly damaged or something. But yeah, it's uh, cool to see. Let's see. Is this a really rare set or something? It doesn't look like it would be too rare. No, it's pretty cheap overall. But the tan antennas and stuff like that um, are still worth a little bit. Let's just get that up. I know I listed them already and I think these ones are pretty good. Let's see. They are worth between 17 cents and a dollar almost. So yeah, it's not quite uh, the most valuable part out there, but it's pretty solid considering it's from a rather cheap set in general. Another somewhat decent find, there's two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve of these, uh, unless I kind of wrong, I feel like I did. Yeah, wait, okay, one second. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Okay, I was right, twelve of these dark green 2x3 plate modified and they're worth between six cents and 388 a piece so wow that's a pretty good find I, they almost feel like they're from one of the older train sets i want to say or maybe a christmas one actually they're on a whole bunch of different ones but okay well i thought it with the dark green i thought it was from the emerald express maybe but doesn't look like it. I guess it's just an overall desirable piece. Probably pretty popular in a certain mock or something like that. So yeah, overall nice find. And then uh, these ones here aren't anything special really. After listing a couple of these of uh, 
plates. I think this is going to become a common trend for these because they uh, seem to be a more used part in the sets is uh, these ones have minor damage and these ones are the good ones. There are very few good ones uh, and a lot of them that have uh, minor damage on them. Oh, is that a faded one? Yeah, you can almost see it in the picture. It's a lot more in, in the video. It's a lot more visible in person. But yeah, that one is faded a whole bunch. Put that away in the garbage. At least there's not too many garbage ones per se. Um, but yeah, there's uh, going to be a lot of them have minor damage and only a few good. So yeah, just a quick overview of the some of the photos I added. Uh, I'll just compare some of the old to the new ones. So this was the old one and this is the new one. This one had no old image. I thought I had submitted one, but I it wasn't there, even though it was marked as approved earlier. This is the old one. This is the new one. This is the old one. This is the new one. And yeah, it is the right way. It's just in the photo, the parts were backwards. And I put them straight in the uh, this one here. So the titles are a bit off. It says right side is like gray. And it is like gray, but now it's facing the proper way. So now it looks like it's the left side, but it is the right side. It's confusing. And then this one, this is the old photo, and this is the new photo, old photo, new photo, old photo, new photo. And there's some, you can kind of see the table, it wasn't edited out properly there. I tried to manually go through, but I just made it look worse every time. Old photo, over there, new photo there, and this is the alternate image photo it took forever to do this one and this one i did the other day and uh this was the old photo new photo and uh this one here I, it, it's a bit of an improvement it's not the best improvement but that's that and then oh yeah and then this one here this was the old photo and then this is the new photo this is the last one i did i'm very happy with this photo it looks very professional i feel and i think that's all of them Oh yeah, and these were the other day, but I've showed that before. But yeah, that's all of them. So overall, pretty successful day. I got a couple of the uh, half necklace heart things listed. Uh, not too many of them, still lots to go. But overall, pretty good day. And I'm calling it a uh, day at 10, 12 p.m. And then I'll play games for a bit. And then uh, I'll probably check in tomorrow again when I get back to work. I should just give a quick update on this and add it into the vlog. I did contact the seller and they said that they're going to be sending out replacement parts. So hopefully those things don't arrive as damaged. Because yeah, even though I quite often get um, damaged parts in the mail from different stores and stuff like that. The one thing is the majority of the time, not every time, but the majority of the time the seller is very kind and does end up resolving it. And so that's why I continue to place orders ultimately. But yeah, it's just, it, it's a shame how I always have to contact them to get the good parts but at least in the end it works out and that's what matters i just got to work and i think the first thing i'm gonna do is edit the vlog you're currently watching if you got this far it's 1 33 p.m and uh so yeah this is probably the end of the vlog thank you for watching and hopefully the next vlog will be out next week wednesday i think it is yeah wednesday and uh hopefully i'll be able to get a whole bunch more of this galador stuff listed by the time that vlogs up and uh yeah later today or while i'm making a vlog i'll probably work on a bit of this stuff here but thank you for watching and see you next time